Hundred Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast 195 regarding a dead body in an apartment at 834 East 6th Street. Maybe a murder. That's all. Rosenquist. to again present Chief of Police James E. Davis. Chief Davis. Good evening, friends. Your police department are going Hollywood, but only to the extent that they are now utilizing the sound camera for the purposes of recording evidence. It is the practice of skilled investigators to reenact the scenes of major crimes, and often enactment is participated in by the defendant in the case. Frequently, the defendant not denies his actions, and statements in court. With a sound camera, the prosecution is in a position to refute such denials and present to the court and jury actual photographs and recorded statements made by the defendant during the investigation. Such evidence is of material value in securing the conviction of persons who, by their actions, have proved themselves menaces to society. You, the citizens of California, may take pride in the progress of your departments. The police are eager to experiment with and adopt an approved, successful, modern means of police technique. Patrick McManus had one all-consuming passion, money. He craved money because it would pay for whiskey, and whiskey would drown the fears that beclouded his aging mind. When he had money, he bought whiskey. And when he drank whiskey, he forgot about the men who persecuted him. Men who wanted him out of the way so they could force his wife to give them her property. That property was his. No one had a right to it but him. No one must get to his wife and get that property away from her. He must guard her. He must keep them away. That'll keep him out. That'll keep him out. That'll keep him out. Yeah, it'll keep him out. Got to keep him away. You got to keep him away. She mustn't see him. And they mustn't see her. Is that you, Pat? Oh, yes, dear, yes, dear, yes, dear, yes. I'm home, yes, I'm home, I'm, I'm home. I'm so glad. I'm home. I've been so long. Oh, well, they've been here, they've been here. Yes, they've been here. They've seen her. They've got her to sign, to sign. I kill them. Patrick, uh, yes. don't stand there, Mother. No, no, no. Come on in I'll here. I'll kill them, I'll kill them, I'll kill them. Yes, dear, yes, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. you were gone a long time. Oh, yes, dear. Did you get the whiskey? Yes, I did. Here, I got it. Uh, do you want a wee bit of a toddy now? Yes. If you don't mm. mind fixing it for me. Oh, no, 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 of course I don't mind. Were they here when I was gone? Was who here? Oh, you know who I mean. No one has been here tonight. Oh, where's the money you left on the dresser? It's still there, isn't oh, it? Oh, no, it's not. No, you know it's not. Why do you antagonize me like this? You know they're after me. They're after no, me. Yes, they are. They are. No one's going oh, to hurt you. Oh, they are. They are. Nobody's going to hurt either. Oh, what do you know about it? You've been drinking. Oh, I have much, not. I have not. I haven't. Why don't you oh, stop? You go nagging at me. Nagging at me. You're nagging at me. And it's got to stop. There, there, dear. Don't get excited. Drink your time. Yes, yes, I You'll I'm feel better. Yes, I'll feel better. I'll feel better. Yes, yes, yes. I'll feel better. I'll feel better. I'll feel better. I'll feel Patrick. better. Uh, don't, Mother. Oh, don't tell me what to do. I Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I'm jumpy tonight. I'm just jumpy. I'm, I'm jumpy. Did you write that new will today, uh, Patrick? Huh? The one I asked you to. Yes, yes, I wrote it, yes. Where is it, dear? Well, uh, I want to sign it's it. It's in my coat. Well, I'll get it. I'll get it. Bring the pen with you, too. Yes, yes, yes. Bring the pen. Bring the pen. The pen. The pen. Yes. I'll, I'll bring the pen. I'll, I'll bring the will, too. The will. The will. Yes, that's it. They won't be able to get the property now. It'll be mine. It'll be mine. And they'll keep... <laughs> they'll keep away from her now. And here it is, my dear. Here it is. All right, if you to sign. Here's the pin. Read it to me first, Patrick. Read it. Read it. Read it. Yes, read it. Read it. Yes, 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 yes. We hereby give to the Communist Party all our property and money in case of our death. And death, yes. If I, Josephine McManus, die before my husband, here's to have all of my property and money. And if I, Patrick McManus, die first, all the property is to belong to my wife. My wife, yes, my wife. That's right. Anna said she might come hmm. over tonight. Anna, uh, she's been around here again. Why, don't you like Anna, dear? Uh, she's after your money. 
Oh, that's not. It's not anything of the kind. Anna has plenty. She has not. She doesn't but I don't need care. our money. I don't care. She won't get it anyway. After all, <laughs> Patrick, she is my sister's ah, daughter. Ah, yes. Uh, it wouldn't hurt us to let her have some of the property. No, she shan't have a cent. Not one cent. That's mine. It's mine. Every red cent yes, when it's ours. Yes, dear. I know. Yes, it is. Shall we go to bed now? Then you go. You go. I want to read a while. Yes, I'm going to read a while. All right. All right. Will you help me, Why, Patrick? certainly. Easy now. Easy does it. Now, where's yes. my crutch? Oh, well, for you, for you. Oh, here it is. Yes, there it is. Now. Yes, easy now. Easy there. Are you all right now? Be all right, dear. All right. I do wish they hadn't taken my other crutch. Your other crutch? Oh, yes, 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 your other crutch, yes. I miss going out like I used to. When I had the other crutch, it wasn't so difficult to go downstairs. Yes, dear, downstairs, the neighbors. Anna. Anna. What did you say, dear? Oh, nothing. I was only thinking, just thinking, just thinking. That's all. Patrick McManus sat by the window, watching the fog eddy behind the speeding automobiles as the traffic gradually dwindled to a thin procession. He was thinking, thinking, thinking. It's mine now, it's mine, it's mine. If I die first, but I won't die first. I won't die first. I won't die. I won't die. Maybe she... That's it. That's it. She'll die first. She'll die first. She'll die. And I'll be safe. Then I'll be safe. I'll be safe. <laughs> Through the thickening fogs of his miasmic fears, Patrick McManus considered his situation, laid plans, and out of the crumbling wreckage of his mind built barriers around his cowering soul. I'll show them. I'll teach them a trick or two or two or three, maybe. I'll get the money. I'll get all of it. Nobody else will get it. I'll do it tonight with my hands, with my knees, with my feet. I'll do it tonight. No! On the morning of February 10th, 1937, Patrick McManus, the cold light of sanity back in his gray eyes, but tense and excited, rushed into the drugstore at 5th and Glad Street. Good morning, Mr. McManus. Uh, uh, Why, what's wrong? Well, my wife, uh, uh, my wife, uh, she's dead. What? Yes, she's dead. But when did it happen? Well, during the night, I don't know when. Now, uh, when I woke up... Uh, well, hadn't we better call the police? The police, yes. Oh, the police, no, no, no uh, an undertaker. No, no, that's it, an undertaker. Yes, and they can call the police yeah, later. Right. No, 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 there's no need to call, call the police, no. You know, she was old. Oh, of course. She, uh, she was, have she, you any preferences uh, to funeral directors? No, 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 anyone will do. She was old, she was... Uh, here's one, uh, she was just terrible. a moment. Yes, she was terrible old. But she was the 84 next March, I don't know what it was, St. Patrick's Day or what it was. The 10th of March, that's what it was, Yes, uh, I'm simple. calling for a Mr. McManus. Yes, His wife sir, passed Mr. away McManus. last night at... Uh, What's your address, yes, Mr. McManus? So the address is... Uh, oh, uh, it's, uh, 834 East 6th Street, it is. At 834 East 6th That's Street. That's right. Tell them to hurry. The stupefying powers of the liquor he had drunk were fading, and the overpowering fears of Patrick McManus came back in all their hideous force. At last, he gained the sanctuary of his own home, flung open the door, raced up the stairs, and stopped trembling inside his room. Oh, but I hear them. I hear them. But they won't get me, no. They won't get the money, the money, the money. She's gone. She's gone. They won't find her. No, they won't find her. Find her! Ah. Though accustomed to sights of violence, the mortician's assistants recoiled in horror from the sight that awaited them in the home of Patrick McManus. Hastily, they summoned the police. Mr. McManus? Yes, sir. I'm Lieutenant Silkus, homicide squad. This yes. is Lieutenant Baker. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Won't you come in? Thanks. That's funny, doesn't he? All right, I better keep your eye on him. Well, what can I do for you, gentlemen? Why, we got a call from Door Brothers, Door... undertakers. Oh. Now, that, uh, there was a case over here that needed investigating. Oh, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir. There's nothing wrong here to turn it on. I understand your wife passed away during the oh, night. Oh, yes, sir. The poor soul. She was 84 years old. Come next. March the 10th, she was... She must have been pretty feeble, wasn't she? Oh, it? she was that way. For the past five years, she had been able to walk. Or at least twice, not without her crutches. And, and then the black-hearted ones, they, they, they come and they stole them. Somebody stole her crutches? Well, at least one of them. She still had the other one last night when when uh, when, when the man come back. Uh, now, just wait a minute. Yes. Let's get this straight. Somebody came in here and stole a crutch. That's right, yes, sir. When was that? Well, it was about uh, six weeks ago, it was. Did he get anything else? Well, um, no, not at that time he didn't. Did he at any other time? Well, last night he got uh, he got all my money. How much was that? That was uh, uh, $15 or all I had. How did that happen? Stick up? Well, uh, 
It was about eight o'clock, I think it was, and I, and I decided that I, I needed a, a wee little drop of the creature, a toddy, you know. And I went down to the drugstore and I got me a bottle mm-hmm. of... Uh, Did you of, uh, have the money with you? No. No, I, I'd be, uh, been afraid I'd been held up, so I, I threw the money on, on the bureau there. It was there when you left? Yes, sir. Mm, how much? Well, as I said, about uh, $15. Didn't uh, you take it with you? Uh, well, any of it? Uh, well, no, sir. Uh, well, yes, I, I took maybe, well, a little bit, five dollars or something. And when you got back, the money was gone? Oh, yes, sir, that's right, yes. Uh, where was your wife all this time? Uh, she, she was in the room there, I mean, uh, this room here, yes, lying on the couch there. Didn't she see who took the money? Oh, yes, yes. When I came in, she said, oh, the cable that took the money. She was all excited, yes, sir. And what did you say to that? Well, uh, I said, oh, no, that's all right, dear, I said, uh, Sure, we got enough to live. What, uh, what little time we got left to live? What do you mean by that? Well, oh, sure, we're both old, and we didn't have much time left. Did this man, uh, this burglar, did he molest your wife in any way? Oh, sure, yes. He, he, he choked till he blacked both her eyes. Did you notify the police? No. No, sir, no. no. Why not? Well, I've been threatened several times, and when we've missed a few things out of the house from time to time... We were just afraid to report it. Have you ever been in jail, McManus? Uh, what? Have you ever been in jail? Oh, uh, me? No, 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 never, sir. Never. Then that wasn't your reason for not reporting those thefts to the police. Oh, no, sir. No, sir. I swear it. Okay. Yes. Now, after your wife told you these men, or this man, had beat her up and had taken the money, what did you do? Well, I, I looked around to see if I could uh, find the money, but, but when I couldn't, well, uh, I, I went out and I fixed a toddy for my wife and myself. And, uh, did you uh, get drunk? Drunk? I, well, no, no. I, well, I don't drink that much. Uh, did your wife get drunk? Oh, no. No. Well, what did you do after that? Well, we, we sat around till about uh, 9.30 and we read the paper. Did you go to bed first? Well, uh, no. Uh, my wife went to bed first. How long before you went to bed? About 15 minutes. Was your wife all right then? Well, sure she was. Well, she said she didn't feel well, but uh, she seemed to be all right. Was she bleeding from any cuts or anything like that? Oh, no, no, no. She seemed to be all right. Did she walk to the bedroom by herself? Yes, uh, with her crutch. I believe you said the other one was stolen. Yes. About how long ago? About uh, six weeks. How many bills did you leave on the bureau? Uh, 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 five and a ten dollar bill. Hmm, I see. Uh, they were gone when you got back. Yes, sir, that's right. And that was all the money you had, the five uh, and the ten dollar bill? Well, yeah, well, uh, no, I had... Uh, Besides what you had in your pocket, yes. the change from the five you took to the drugstore, yes. is that right? Well, uh, yes, that's right, yes, sir. Uh, do you believe... That somebody broke in and stole that money. Well, now, to tell you the truth, no. What do you mean? Well, sometimes my wife had ideas that people were trying to kill her. Hallucinations, huh? Well, whatever you call them, the same. Uh, she would imagine things. Then how do you account for the money being gone? Well, uh, oh, now that I don't know. But weren't her eyes black and her throat showed signs of being choked? I never noticed that. Didn't you just tell me that the man beat her up? Man, dear in life, that was what she told me. I saw no marks like that. No, sir, I did not know. What time did you say you went to bed? Well, about uh, 9.30. You sat around reading from the time you got back from the drugstore until you went to bed. Mm, yes, sir. Your wife was here all that time. That's right, sir, yes, sir. After you went to bed, did anything unusual happen? Well, along about midnight, I, I was awakened by my wife falling out of the bed. I, I got up and I, and I switched on the light. Was she hurt any? Well, not that I could see. I, I picked her up and I... I, I says to her, dear, shall I go for a doctor? And, and she said, no, she was all right. So I went back to bed. Did you go right to sleep? Well, uh, in, a, in a few minutes, I did. Did anything else happen that night that was last night, wasn't it? Yeah, that was last night, yes, sir. Well, along about dawn this morning, would you believe it? My wife fell out of bed again. Did you get up again? Sure, I did. I got up and I, and I put her back to bed. And I, I says to her, no, dear, I'm going to get a doctor right now. And she said not to do it, no. And she said, yeah, all right. Was she all right? Well, no. Uh, I don't exactly get that. I mean, did you see any bruises or blood when you put her back in bed? Oh, no, 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 nothing at all, no. She seemed to be perfectly all right. Did she hurt herself in any way? Not that I could see. I straightened out her legs and I, I tucked her feet in and I, I put her pillow under the edge of the stick, the, the mattress there, so she wouldn't roll out again. Then did you go back to bed? Yes, and I did. Uh, I, I went to sleep then. When did you wake up? Well, I should say about uh, 7.30 or 8 o'clock. Notice anything wrong then? Well, I, I said to my wife, I, I said... Well, dear, how do you feel this morning, darling? The, the top of the morning, we always say that, you know, whichever one of us wakes up first. And, and she didn't say a thing. So I, I put my hand on her shoulder, and, and she was cold. Cold? Well, she was almost cold. And I felt her feet, and they, and they was cold. I took hold of her hand, and I felt her pulse, and she was dead. Then what did you do? Well, I, I slipped on my pants, and I ran down to the drugstore, and, 
I, I told the drugist man to, to phone for the police. Why the police? Well, I, I didn't know what else to do. Did he do that? No, he did not. He phoned for the undertaker, and he said they'd call the police. I see. Mr. McManus, how do you sleep? Pretty uh, good. Uh, I mean, um, uh, do you wear pajamas or nightshirt or <laughs> what? <laughs> well, now, ordinarily, I, I sleep in a nightshirt. But one of my shirts is in the laundry, and <laughs> the other one's dirty. I forgot to get the laundry. <laughs> you send your clothes to a laundry yes, close sir. by, yes, of course. Sir. Well, sure, the laundry's got a branch near the corner. You drop the button with the chute and go yeah, right yeah, yeah, into the laundry. I, I, I know, I know. Uh, when did you send your laundry? Well, I, I sent it sometime around the, the first of the month or the or the fourth or the, or the fifth or something, I believe. Uh, hey, Baker, what'd you find? Plenty. Come here a minute. Excuse me a minute, Mr. McManus. Sure, right sir. back. Yes, sir, that's right. What's up, Bill? Take a look. Something. Who did that? I have a sneaking hunch at your patty friend out there. Why, that old coot, he couldn't do a thing like that. Well, somebody did. Hey, this woman's been dead longer than since this morning. You're telling me. Say, I've found enough evidence around here to hang four guys. Oh. Let's get out of here. We're going to take our pal downstairs to headquarters. I want to get his story on a sound film before he decides to change it. Did he confess? Confess my eye. I want to get his story recorded before he does confess. <laughs> Convinced the story told by McManus was false, but equally convinced that it would sound just as ridiculous and fantastic to a jury, officers took the suspect to the crime investigation laboratory. And preparations were made to photograph and record in sound the story of Patrick McManus. Now, Mr. McManus, I'd like to ask you a few questions more about your wife. Go right ahead, sir. You you say she wasn't able to walk without crutches? Well, not for five years since she fell down the steps of the stoop then. Well, I, I didn't see but one crutch when we were out at the house. Where's the other one? They stole it. Them fellas that broke in about six weeks ago. Did your wife leave a will, Mr. McManus? She did that. We both had a win. I left everything I had to her, and she left all her property to me, if she died first. And you expected to die first, didn't you? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, indeed. I see. Uh, how old were these wills? Well, we made them back in the... Let me see. It was, it was 37, 5, 1933, it was. I think it was. That, that was before her mind was affected. Oh, then she wasn't of a sound mind. Oh, well, no. Well, yes. I, I mean, ever since her sister died, she was that way. Did your wife write these wills herself? No, no, no. She couldn't write. Well, she, she wasn't able to write for, um, what, I'd say five years now. I found this tablet in your bedroom. Was it the one your will was written on? Oh, the writing tablet. Yes, that's the one, sure. Did you use it much? Well, uh, yes. Oh, I wrote a good many letters. Write any lately? Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, just this week, I wrote to my friend in Iowa... Mr. McManus, tests show these wills were written less than a week ago. Oh, yes? Now, I wonder if you'd mind telling us your story again. Wait, uh, I, uh, sure. Uh, uh, just as you told us out at your house. Well, I wouldn't mind it at all, John. As I said, they were talking about 8.30 last night. So Patrick McManus told his story again, prompted now and then by Lieutenant Stilkus and Baker. The story was recorded and photographed by a sound camera to be introduced in court later as evidence. Then, in company with Ray Finker and others at the crime laboratory, the detectives returned to the McManus apartment. Are you sure the old man killed his wife? Just as sure as I am that I'm standing here. How do you figure? He told us he went to the drugstore last night, came back here, and found his wife beaten up by burglars. He had her doing everything but dancing before she went to bed. Well, maybe his story's true. And you didn't see the coroner's report? No, what did you? According to the autopsy surgeon, Mrs. McManus died within ten minutes from the time she received a terrific beating. Well, I thought she died this morning. He's been dead at least 36 hours when the undertaker was called. Um, okay. Let's get started on this place. Baker, you take this room. I'll take the bedroom. Oh, I suppose I uh, twiddle my thumbs, huh? No, you come on in here with me and twiddle them. Well, what do you expect to find? A nightshirt. Oh, nightshirt. Hmm? A nightshirt. Oh, then I take it you don't believe the robbery story. Thinker, at times you amaze me with your perception of the obvious. Of course I don't believe it. And what do you expect to find on uh, said nightshirt? Blood. Oh, blood. Yeah, another job for you. Hey, Joe, come here. Looks like Baker's got something treed again. Say, take a look at this. A nightshirt. A uh, bloody nightshirt, Mr. Focus. Thank you, Pinker. Where'd you find it, Bill? Stuffed up on top of a ledge back of the portiers in the next room. Exhibit A, Pinker. Think that's human blood? No, mm, looks like it. Looks like it. Nuts, it is. Well, let's see, maybe I'm in the wrong case. Looks like you don't need a chemist. Find anything else, Bill? Yeah, this copy of the evening news. Mm. Where'd you find that? Back of that washstand. 
February 8th, 1937. Eight persons injured in the oh, Wait a minute. Crash. Wait a minute. What's the matter? What's this smear on the back page? Looks like blood. I can't say it was yeah. blood. Now, look out, Ray. You're making a definite statement. Uh, now, listen, cop. You've seen as many cases as I have. And blow up because of hasty statements. You'd be cautious, too. Better be careful, Baker. Thinker's getting sensitive. Well, nevertheless, sir, this is blood. And the paper is dated the 8th. And it's the paper McManus said he was reading. And the autopsy surgeon says Mrs. McManus, uh, McManus was killed on the 8th. Say, how about the time element in McManus's story? Well, that's uh, what made me suspicious in the first place. He said that he jumped out of bed this morning, ran down to the drugstore... And had the druggist call the undertaker... At about 8.30. As a matter of fact, the undertakers didn't get the message until 12.40. And we got their call at 1.20. Well, looks like McManus's story is full of holes. It looks that way. Say, come over here and help me move this washstand. Let's see what's behind it. Okay. I thought so. What now? Here's that other crutch. Oh, it's beginning to look screwy. Did you examine the bed for blood stains? Well, yeah, lots of them there. I still don't think she was killed there, though. Yeah, probably not. Did the old man say something about a couch? That's it. Let's take a look. Mm-hmm. I expected that. Yep, you're right. That's where the job was done. Let's take a look at the rest of this place. I've looked over all these rooms up here. They're all furnished, but haven't been occupied. How many rooms on the bottom floor? Looks like it's the same as the upstairs portion. Any furniture in them? No, all empty. Okay, let's try this one first. Hey, here's a new set of footprints in the dust. Are they McManus's? Uh-uh, Joe's off again, though. Yeah, so I see. Well, you ought to be able to tell that much. Oh, come on, forget it and get busy. Now, here's just... Oh, this is just what the doctor ordered, boys. What'd you find? One ten-dollar bill and a five. That's the money McManus is supposed to have lost. That's right. So let's wend our weary way back to the headquarters and tell our story to the district attorney. <laughs> Complaints were issued, and Patrick McManus was brought before the grand jury. He is questioned. The sound film of his confession is exhibited. Finally, Lieutenant Sokus is called to testify. Lieutenant Sokus, I want you to tell the jury what you found out when you investigated further in this case. Did you find any blood stains? <clears throat> Besides the uh, blood stains on the bed, we found several large stains on the couch in the sewing room. Was that where Mrs. McManus was when the attack occurred? Yes, sir. I also checked the laundry and talked to Clara Snow. The girl who handled the bundle after it uh, came into the lawn. The bundle came to us from our agent on 6th Street. What time did it get here? Well, I don't know. But I got it on the morning of the 9th. Have you any way of knowing when it was placed in the box on 6th Street? Well, ordinarily I wouldn't. But this bundle was so peculiar that I checked up. What do you mean, peculiar? Well, in the first place it was wet. And it had some blood-stained clothes in it. Are you sure about that? Oh, yes, sir. You see, when I got the bundle and saw how it was... Well, I took it to Miss Crane. Who's she? She's in charge of my department. What did she do with it? She took it to Miss Gaines. Who's Miss Gaines? She's the head marker. I suppose she took it to somebody else. Oh, yes, sir. She took it to uh, Mr. Myrick, the manager. And I suppose he didn't have anybody to take it to. No, sir. Well, as I said, we found out the bundle had been put in the slot at the 6th Street Agency at about 11 o'clock on the night of the 8th. That checks. So you got the bundle on the morning of the 9th. Uh-huh. You sure it wasn't the morning of the 10th today? No, sir. It was yesterday morning. It couldn't have been earlier in the week, could it? No, sir. I'm positive it was yesterday morning. Okay, thanks. Your suspicions have been extremely valuable to us, Department. Make tests of the clothing I get, that I got from the laundry, and they showed blood reactions. Had they been washed before being taken to the laundry? Some of them had been washed with some chemical to remove the blood, but it only turned the cloth to a tan color. Thank you. That's all, Lieutenant. That's our case, ladies and gentlemen. The jury will retire. Well, Joe, do you think McManus is insane? Insane? Say, that guy's so crazy, he couldn't pour water out of a boot with the directions on the heel. Would you believe it? The last time I saw him, he said to me... Yes, there's a little folks, and then there's the fairies, and the fairies is the best, though. Oh, there's a pretty little green fairy, and she helps me a lot. <laughs> she looks after my dog, and she combs my hair with a frying pan. And she's pretty, too. Oh, but she's only got one crutch. She only got one crutch, me dear, and St. Patrick's Day in the morning. <laughs> Parade is in fish. She's a not very good
Los Angeles Police calling all cars, attention all cars. A cancellation broadcast 195 regarding a murder at 834 East 6th Street. Suspects in this case are sent to the Mendocino Hospital. That's all. Rolls and quits. <laughs> This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night. <laughs>